TikTok is currently one of the most popular social media platforms worldwide with more than 1.7 billion users. The short video sharing platform is expected to reach 2.2 billion users by 2027 according to Statista. But TikTok is in serious danger of being killed off. Political pressure has meant that the app is being banned in many countries around the world due to concerns around obscene and vulgar content on the platform. And international governments are also concerned about the ownership of TikTok, saying its parent company ByteDance has very close links with the Chinese Communist Party. The implication is that in allowing their government officials and the public at large to freely use TikTok, nations are opening themselves up to cyber manipulation and data misuse from a Chinese government-backed tech company. So what is the truth about the Chinese government's level of control of TikTok? And given big tech is watching from the sidelines, what is the dilemma companies like Meta, Google, and X find themselves in around the TikTok situation? Also, stay till the end to see if a ban of TikTok will really make users safe. ByteDance is a Chinese multinational internet technology company known for its various digital platforms and services. Founded in 2012 by Zhang Yiming, ByteDance has rapidly grown to become one of the world's most valuable technology startups. The company's flagship product is the short form video app, TikTok. And although there is Chinese government involvement in TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, it's complicated. You see, ByteDance is a Cayman Islands registered company for tax purposes, with the main holding company having a number of subsidiaries, including TikTok, and another company called Doyen. Doyen is what TikTok was modeled off. Doyen operates in the Chinese market and has over 750 million daily users. And technically, the Chinese government owns 1% of a subsidiary of Doyen. So economically, the Chinese government owns very little of ByteDance and doesn't own a direct share in TikTok Limited, the company through which the TikTok we know operates. But in order to understand the control China has over ByteDance, hence TikTok, it's important to understand the mechanism the Chinese government has in place with tech companies. Over the last decade, the Chinese government has taken a golden share in tech companies it has considered as being large enough and significant enough in terms of reach and influence. This golden share affects effectively allows government officials to be directly involved in the business, including having influence on the type of content that is provided to users of the technology. This golden share gives the government decisive voting rights or veto power. This is important because when we hear that the US government is passing a bill to force ByteDance to sell TikTok or then ban it, the eventual decision on what happens to TikTok is in the hands of the Chinese government because of this golden share. It's also worth recognizing that a 2018 national intelligence law was passed in China that means organizations need to support, assist, and cooperate with national intelligence work. Effectively, they need to comply with what the Chinese government tells them to do. So clearly, the Chinese government has real control over ByteDance, hence TikTok, which warrants the scrutiny the app is facing. But there are also Western influences at play in ByteDance. For example, some of the most prominent investors in the world, such as Sequoia, KKR, KOTU, Susquehanna, and General Atlantic were all investors in ByteDance. That means Western pension funds are already being deployed by these investors in this controversial tech company. But that's not all. Of the five board members, three are American, which is important in signaling how strategic control of ByteDance is executed, notwithstanding the Chinese government's veto. Despite all this though, it's important to acknowledge that TikTok has never operated in mainland China, given the presence of Doyen in the local market. Also, the CEO is not Chinese but Singaporean, and to date, there has been very limited evidence to suggest that TikTok's parent, ByteDance, has actually shared user data with the Chinese government. It's perhaps a sign of ByteDance's desire to maintain the existing momentum TikTok has as a major social media player on the global stage. The company has taken the step of storing US user data in data centers in Texas, putting the data out of China's reach. But the scrutiny around TikTok continues. And all the while, big tech continues to watch from the sidelines. The big social media companies such as Facebook, Instagram, both owned by Meta, X, YouTube, and Snapchat will have mixed feelings. On the one hand, a potential ban of TikTok will eliminate a very large and growing competitor that has over 175 million users in the US alone. That's half the US population. TikTok has also forced big tech to catch up and develop their own short video sharing capabilities, given the popularity of shorter media, a sign of disruptive competition. But equally, the rhetoric that comes with banning TikTok is not unique to just TikTok. 
Companies like Meta and X have also been questioned about the use of their data and the level of safety on their platforms, especially for kids. Whilst they will like the fact that TikTok's activities are being curtailed, they will be concerned that ruling intended for TikTok will latterly implicate and impact them also. And they have a real reason to be concerned. The European Union last year slapped Meta with a record $1.3 billion privacy fine and ordered it to stop transferring users' personal information across the Atlantic in a decade-long case sparked by US cyber snooping fears. And it's not just Meta. All the social media and internet platforms have been collecting user data and selling and leaking it all over the world. Back to Facebook again, it has specifically been accused of granting access to user data to China of all countries. But users need to understand that by going online, users have agreed to their data being shared with thousands of parties worldwide. Social media companies aren't in fact free. The product is you. But will banning TikTok make users safe? Given the issues US legislators talk about for TikTok exist with all other social media platforms as well, it's hard to take the stance on TikTok at face value. This seems more like political convenience given the selective application of political lobbying. For a start, the bill passed by the House of Representatives will give ByteDance six months to sell TikTok. But who could buy a business valued at nearly $300 billion? And it's inevitable that the Chinese government, through their veto, would not sell TikTok. So it seems like this is an exercise of knowing that banning TikTok is the likely outcome here. But banning TikTok will not get rid of data and safety problems on social media platforms. Many other platforms will still exist, who still have this problem, and have had this problem for nearly 20 years now. And those issues have not been properly addressed. And these issues arise largely from US companies. But in election year in the US, a ban could alienate the app's youthful user base who rely on it for their news. Perhaps this is one of the reasons why Donald Trump is now in favor of allowing TikTok to continue unhindered. It gets the young vote. It does become confusing though, when an allegedly dangerous tech platform is still being used across US government, including by the current president of the United States. But TikTok is not the only tech company that the US government is aiming to control and censor. Click the link on the screen to see how the US government is restricting Nvidia's growth by curtailing the sale of their most advanced GPUs in China. Thanks for watching.